Hey guys, it's Chris coming to you live from the Spokane River. I'm, I have a smile on my face today because this is a gorgeous shot behind me <laughs> and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, anyway, today I'm talking about the M5 Stack card computer. It's this tiny little thing. It's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, it's another reason to smile. It's bringing a joy to my face um, just from the fun that I've had with this. You know, this computer, it's tiny, it doesn't do much, but it's beautiful, it feels good in the hand, and I think there's a lot of potential going forward for this device. So this device runs on a, what is this, a, an ESP32. It's this tiny little, this tiny little area in the corner. That's the computer. That is the entire computer. Well, not the entire computer. That's where the processor is, that's where the RAM is, that's uh, where, you know, the, the chips. I don't know all the technical stuff. I'm going to skip over that, but I'm going to tell you what I feel what I feel when I'm using this device. First of all, the, the buttons feel great under my fingers. They're tiny, but they're not so tiny to where I can't enter text. It's it's um, so tactile. It's got that tactile feel, which uh, you know it's missing in smartphones today, and I don't like that about touchscreen phones. There's no tactile feel. You know, I can't close my eyes and know where the buttons are on the smartphone, but this I can. Okay, let's turn this on. It's got a delightful little ding that chimes when you turn it on. Now let's go through the menu. You just hit any key to start and it takes us to the menu. And then we can use the arrow keys on the bottom right of the keyboard to go through the different demo apps. Like this whole thing is a demo app. Uh, it shows kind of the different functions that you can, that are available on this device. The source code is online. It's on the GitHub. Uh, and uh, I went through the code. I, I browsed through some of the code of this app. It looks pretty uh, complicated. It's written in C. So we've got an app to scan for Wi-Fi networks. We've got an app to record audio. Now this audio recording app, it's it's very rudimentary. You get like one second of audio recording and it doesn't save. It just kind of shows you a waveform and then you can play back the audio. But again, only one second of audio. It's not that useful. But I got to remind myself, this is a demo app. It's showing us what the device is capable of. It's showing developers what sort of things they can create and inspiring them to create their own apps. ESP Now is the reason I bought this device. Growing up, going through school, I always wished I had some sort of device that I could pull out of my pocket all sneakily and type in, type in some messages to my friend in a different room. <laughs> I purchased a, a second one of these devices and I'm going to be trying that app out once I get it. It's got an IR remote app. You can type in hex codes to be sent via the IR LED. I haven't been able to try that yet because I don't have any devices that use an infrared remote. It's got a REPL. You can type in code, I think. I haven't gotten any use out of that. Set Wi-Fi lets you connect to a Wi-Fi network. Timer shows you how long the device has been running. The keyboard app, I think, is the most useful. This lets me use the keyboard of the M5 stack card computer as an input device on my desktop computer. And I've been using this every day at home. I have a two computer setup. The one on the left is its own computer. I have a mouse connected to it, but to save desktop space, I have no keyboard. So this means I have to pull up Windows on-screen keyboard if I need to type something into the window. With this M5 stack card computer, I can have this plugged in, and all of a sudden I've got the world's tiniest keyboard, which I can type in text with my thumbs, and it's really useful. Practically, I usually only have a, a Pomodoro timer on that computer, so I only need to press spacebar. And that's easy to press on this device. It's the button on the bottom right. Card computer can also be used as a Bluetooth low energy keyboard. I, I did try to connect this to my Windows computer. I wasn't able to get any text to go through. I did see on a video, someone paired this card computer with their phone and they were able to type text on their phone using this device. It might be helpful for certain apps where you want that tactile feel when entering text. It's got a notepad. Notepad I haven't been able to get to work 
because I haven't found an SD card that is compatible with this device. The three SD cards I tried were SDHC cards, or I think one was an XC, I don't know. It's like cards that I used to use when I had a GoPro. I couldn't get any of those cards to be recognized by this device. I went on the forums and got some help. The advice I received was to format the cards using Windows FAT partition type. I tried that. I tried both FAT16 and FAT32, and still none of those cards were recognized by this device. So right now I'm thinking it's one of two things. Either there's a bug in the code that's preventing SD cards from being written to, or the SD cards I have are just incompatible. Or maybe the partitioning tool I'm using, which was G-parted, maybe that's incompatible. I'm not sure yet. Finally, we've got a Hello World app. This simply writes Hello World to the screen. And I think what this is doing is showing developers how to do something similar. If they want to display text on the screen, this is how you can do it. I think the whole point is you go on the GitHub, you find an app that is similar to what you want to create for this device, and then you fork the app and write your own app with the changes you need. I'm loving this device. It's got a tiny little screen that's useful. And you know what? It's kind of daylight visible. Yeah, it is very daylight visible right now. On the back, we've actually got two magnets on here. I tried this on my door. I tried this on a box fan. Uh, any sort of steel metal, this will stick to. I think this might be a cheat code for people to buy the, or be incentivized to buy the device. Lego compatible mounting holes. How cool is this? I am a big fan of Lego. Using Lego, you can craft whatever mounting solution you need. So I think that's really wise. I'm seeing more and more technology companies use Lego mount, Lego compatible mounts. Uh, you know, Clockwork has some clamshells on their on their game shell device. Uh, it has Lego studs on it, so you could build on top. And then we've got like a GPIO on the on the side here. It's uh, you could, there's two different options, either five volts in or five volts out. So this could actually power some accessory devices. What does that sound? Oh, it's a train. So this could actually power some accessory devices and it's got this nice connector here, which you could easily connect and disconnect what you know, the peripheral you're working with. So yeah, this was the M5 stack card computer. And I'm gonna be continuing to try this device out and experiment with it. I've only had it for a few days and I'm learning more about it. Will I find a use for this to where I want to carry it outside the home every day. I'm not sure yet. What I would love to see for this device is a digital audio workstation. Something where like a drum machine or a sequencer that I could uh, be out here in the field and compose music on this. I would love to see that. You know, it's an ESP32 device, so I think it's very, uh, I think it's completely capable for that sort of task. You know, I think it's just gonna take some time for developers to get a hold of this and start writing software for it. I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.